Hey, Salt Lake, at the risk of being too personal, is your mattress sagging? If you are rolling into a taco every night, I am begging you to visit your local mattress warehouse and just try something a little firmer. Your spine is the center of your being, and I don't just want you to have good posture. I want you to Disney princess your way around this city, flush with optimism from a good night's sleep. Visit mattresswarehouseutah.com to find the location nearest you. That's mattresswarehouseutah.com. Here's what Salt Lake's talking about. As the Salt Lake City School District considers a hypothetical $600 million bond to rebuild Highland and West High Schools, the Glendale and Poplar Grove neighborhoods are asking SLC taxpayers to consider making it a hypothetical $900 million bond. So what's the case? And what's at stake for all our schools if we ignore them? It's Thursday, March 14th. I'm Ali Vallarta, and this is CityCast Salt Lake. Jenny Mayer Glenn, you are a longtime advocate for Salt Lake City's West Side and a former SLC School District employee. I want to start at the beginning. Why does Glendale need its own high school? Oh, gosh. Glendale needs its own high school because since 1988, the burden has been on the kids of Glendale to have to get up early in the morning and get on a bus to be bused up to East High and Highland High. So that is a lot of years that kids have had to be had to get up at 5:30 in the morning to get to school on time, have had to miss out on extracurricular activities because they have to come home and and don't have access to get back to the school or they or for ver- a variety of reasons but um it's an equity issue and it's been an equity issue for a very long time what percentage of these high school east side high school student bodies are west side students making up like can you give me a sense of the numbers yeah absolutely so i have data from 2020 and I know it's not much different, but in 2020, 56.8% of the kids that attended East High School lived west of I-15. So more than half the student body, okay. More than half the student, but significantly more than half the student body. And then at Highland High, 11.5% of the kids lived west of I-15. That's Highland, mm. Highland that is clear up there on the east side of Sugar House Park, right? 11% of the kids bust from Glendale. And these bus rides are how long, roughly? Um, at least an hour. At least an hour. Okay. Yeah. That certainly makes getting up for school in the morning a lot less to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It was, yeah. I mean, particularly that age group. I mean, it's hard enough to get out of bed and get to school, but when you have to do it at 5.30 in the morning. It's just really unfair. Yeah. Since when is this a problem? 1988. So South High School, which is now um, Salt Lake Community College South Campus. Ah, yes. Yeah. So that was South High School. And most of the kids um, that attend South High School came from the Glendale area as well, the west side of Salt Lake. Um, and it's still that uh, to me, that's still not equitable, but at least, you know, it was State Street. So it was a little bit closer. Um, in 1988, the Salt Lake School District was having the conversation about closing a school and uh, similar to all of the conversations they're having now. I've talked to people who attended who were attending South High at the time. And um, my understanding is that there was a consultant that was hired by the district and their advice that they gave to the district um, leadership at that time was to close Highland High School. But there was a bunch of pushback from Eastside parents, as one would expect, that that makes sense. And so in, instead of closing Highland High, they closed um, South High School. So there is a West High School which yes. is in sort of, I guess that's Marmalade neighborhood, yeah. yep. 
kind of Rose Park Marmalade boundary of Salt Lake City. And West High School is in physical disrepair, like bats in the building kind of stuff. And the Salt Lake School Board is deciding what to do about that. Now, I read in the Salt Lake Tribune that some West Side parents support the idea of not necessarily rebuilding West High School, but instead building a brand new high school that would serve all of the West Side. The school board hasn't really dipped their toes into that possibility, it seems, but is that idea popular or unpopular with Glendale parents? I think that a more accessible school is what is most popular. I do recognize that there will need to be some conversation and meetings with parents on the West Side. The main issues that I've heard from parents is that it's hard for them. Mm. They want a neighborhood school. They want a school that is closer because they have a hard time getting to the school as well. It's not just about kids getting there. It's also about parents getting there. They want a community feel. They want to feel like it's a place where they belong and where their kids belong. So it's about accessibility. So if it's in the Glendale community or in Poplar Grove or in Rose Park, I think is less important than it being on the West Side in general. Oh, interesting. Okay. So then the sense is, and cr- let me know if I'm understanding this correctly, the the feeling from West Side parents then is, if you're going to rebuild West High School, that doesn't solve our problem because it's still very far yeah. for us and our kids to get from Glendale Poplar Grove. And if you're going to not rebuild West High School and move it, we would like the high school to be close to Glendale and Poplar Grove. But if it's not, then that still doesn't solve our problem. And we don't necessarily want just one high school to serve every student on the west side, given that the east side of Salt Lake City has two. I think you're right. I I think that is the general sentiment. But I do do think that one of the things that's missing for parents – is that they haven't had options for so long that they can't even dream about what would make sense for them. Hmm. They, you know, it's like the choices are so limited. And so if they had an opportunity to be able to really say, this is what we would want, or this is what's best for our kids, they don't even have an opportunity to think about it, honestly. Hmm. So I do know that the families that live in the Rose Park area and whose kids have access to West High are more satisfied because it is closer, right? Yeah. And they can get there. So the burden, the bigger burden is is on families in the Poplar Grove and Glendale community. And if they were given options to talk about, we would know more, right? Hmm. We would know a lot more and the school board would know more and district leadership would know more, but they haven't been asked the questions. Why do you think that is? I mean, we just did this whole boundary study, right? Like, wasn't the school board out in all these neighborhoods getting parent feedback? Like, why is the feeling that no one's been asked? So the parent feedback um, that they've received recently has been about closing elementary schools. So the conversations have revolved around elementary. And there's been an intention to keep those the conversations separate. The idea of a high school in Glendale is one that parents have been speaking, you know, have been saying for a long time that they want it, but it hasn't been on the board agenda necessarily. Now, there have been things on the board agenda about a fourth high school being part of a feasibility study. And one of the good things about that is that it it sounds like that they're listening, they're hearing that that it's something they need to start thinking about, but they really haven't spent much time with community members to find out what it is that they want. Well, Glendale does have a middle school. Yes. And when I've talked to you previously about the fact that Glendale parents want a high school, one of the things that you've said to me was, if this doesn't happen now, it will not happen for another 20 or 30 years. What do you mean by that? 
Yeah, so it's very infrequent that districts go through processes like this, closing schools, building schools. So currently, as you mentioned, they're uh, talking about rebuilding West High School. They're talking about rebuilding Highland High School. Doing those things, that costs a lot of money. They're saying $300 million per school. And so if those things take priority over a high school in Glendale, whether or not it's a fourth high school um, and they rebuild the other ones smaller or it's a third high school and they close one of the other high schools, this decision will not happen again Hmm. um, for a lot of years. And the amount of money that they're putting into the consultants and feasibility studies and things like that, they won't do that again for a long time. So yeah, now's the time. It's for the for the bigger decision, the what do they want high schools to be like in Salt Lake City? That has to happen in collaboration with all of these other decisions that are being made about the other high schools. Salt Lake City, what if this is the year you host Easter dinner or brunch? Harmon's makes big meals easy to prepare with delicious holiday specialties made from scratch. Just heat and serve, baby. Lay a pre-cooked honey ham on the table and absorb the compliments from your family or friends. They don't need to know you napped instead of staring down the oven. And if you're not the host but need something to bring, here are just a few of my favorite spring ideas. First of all, Harmon's fragrant Easter lilies will impress anybody's mom or delight a neighbor. Now there's no need to even heat up a pre-made side like deviled eggs or fresh cut pineapple, but bonus points if you transfer them into your own dish. And as listeners of this show well know, I will lose my mind if you show up to my house with Harmon's hot cross buns. I invite you to make some new Easter traditions with Harmon's. Shipping can make or break a sale, so optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows. And they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code P-O-D. That's ShipStation.com with the code P-O-D. You brought up the cost to rebuild a high school, $300 million. It looks like the Salt Lake City School Board is considering a bond to pay for these improvements. The feeling is from school board members that taxpayers in Salt Lake are likely to grit their teeth at a $600 million bond to rebuild West and Highland. If they built another school, that would bring it up to about $900 million. Now, the parks bond that was on the ballot a couple years ago, it passed with flying colors, but it was only $85 million. Do you think SLC voters would approve a $900 million bond? Gosh, well, I'm an SLC voter and I would. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Good answer. Very diplomatic. (laughs) That is a really difficult question. Yes, $900 million is a lot of money. And... Though I, I will say I'm also, you know, connected to the bond that the University of Utah just got for a hospital in West Valley City at $800 million. So mm-hmm. I guess it's not unheard of that government lends big chunks of money. But um, I, th- I think the issue with this is if voters understand the burden that has been on the West Side, I believe many people would support the idea at that highest amount of money. I also believe that there are ways for us to think about other funds to potentially support this. For example, the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, um, has come to Salt Lake recently, and there is a lot of funding available right now. And, um, you know, what if... This high school that's built in the West Side was also a cooling center slash 
has the highest, the best technology for air, you know, for indoor air quality and so on and so forth. And they put a hundred million dollars into building this building that's accessible to the community, which a high school should be anyway. Then that saves the district a lot of money, but they're they're following in what they know is what they have control over, right? What they have control over is this bonding, and I would love to see them start try to think more creatively and not just depend on this one way to do it. Because I agree with you that when you look at those numbers, and you are a parent that lives you know, on the east side of Salt Lake, and you don't have any connection to the west side, you don't understand what the experience has been for kids that have been bused to uh, across the valley for years and years and years, right? I could see voters not wanting to support a bond that big. I mean, one of the trickiest things I imagine around communicating this need is the fact that one of the elementary schools that is being slated for closure because of decline in overall enrollment in the Salt Lake City School District is Riley Elementary in Glendale. And yet the case is being made at the same time for a new high school to su- to serve presumably students that would have attended Riley Elementary in Glendale. I have to wonder if like there are Salt Lake City taxpayers who would not be opposed to investing $300 million in Glendale, but if they wonder if there's a better way to invest $300 million in Glendale, like what's the case for spending that on a school? Because the 17-acre Glendale Regional Park, which was just bonded and is kind of breaking ground now, that was only $27 million, and that's going to be pretty radical. No, I I agree. There are there are many ways to think about this, and Riley actually would be a great location, right? To mm. to build a high school. I think some of the issues around that have to do with the um, to build a comprehensive high school. You need somewhere between twenty five to thirty acres. And when I say comprehensive high school, it means so that you can have a football field and all of the athletics and and right. all of the things, right? A 20, theater for the theater kids. <laughs> yes, yes, there we go. So we're talking, you know, 25 to 30 acres and Riley, the Riley property is not that big. I do know that Salt Lake City, Mayor Mendenhall is very open to a conversation with the Salt Lake School District about identifying property that maybe the city owns and swapping property or thinking um, creatively about how to support something like this. And so there are options out there. And, you know, these kinds of conversations are not simple and quick or anything like that. They they are complex, hmm. but I think people are willing to have them and willing to... Um, I've even heard parents say they would be willing to do fundraising for a high school in Glendale uh, themselves because it's that important to them. I mean, looking at the Education Collective SLC website, which was a group of parents and former students and community members that began advocating for a Glendale or Poplar Grove High School back in 2020 during the COVID-19 pandemic, it seems like the last communication with the school board around this idea that was very direct was November, 2022. Is Mm -hmm. that correct? That's right, yes. Okay, so that was about a year and a half ago. And it seems like big ideas have a way of just kind of tumbling off a cliff in this city. And so I wanna ask you, I mean, like you've identified that there are a lot of people who are very passionate about this in the Glendale neighborhood. If the school board does nothing, if they don't add a three hundred million dollar bond, if there isn't a you know a property identified elsewhere, like if there is no movement on this at the end of the day, what are the rumblings in Glendale? Like, what lengths will parents go to to get a high school, regardless of the school board's maneuvering? I, I know that there are definitely people who would support a charter school. So, if there is no district high school there will be a charter school. And there are 
funders out there who have said, if if it's a charter school, we, you know, we'll support it. We can help fund it. Um, I think that having been a former educator, right, having mm. I, I worked in the Salt Lake School District for 23 years, I believe in public education fully and completely. And not that charter schools aren't public. They are. And it is a public education. But there's something, you know, important about those systems, um, even though one could argue, you know, that they're working very well or not. I would love to see the district take responsibility and do the Mm -hmm. right thing. And an entity that is, you know, that claims to be um, equitable, right, that they take responsibility for that and take responsibility for the decision that was made. Uh, not on their watch, right? 1988, that I don't think there's any employee or um, board member that was around in 1988. But that is a a decision that was made then that has been a burden on kids in Glendale and families in Glendale. And now is the opportunity to fix that. And I would love to see the district do that. If that doesn't happen, then we will build a charter school. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is that if it's a public charter school, so if it's a state charter or even a district charter school, provided it's approved, they get the WPU funding from the state. So the money that goes to support a charter school is dependent on how many students are there. And I feel confident that, you know, Glendale, if there was a Glendale high school, there would definitely be enough students to support a high school. Um, a charter high school, but the better solution would be for the for a district school to be there and be part of the district. I I mean, and really honestly, if you look at that, if you look at um, there's so many great things happening in the high schools generally, and such so many opportunities. And when you look at you know all of the connections that are happening with the apprenticeship kinds of programs and the industry that we have um, right here near near Salt Lake City, the district could actually really brand itself as like this place with all of these wonderful opportunities for kids um, in high school. Each school could have an identity, right? And then they have buses that go to all of the schools, but then kids get to choose, and families get to choose. And if there are families from Glendale that want their kids to go to East High still, that can they can do that. Um, and if there are families that whose kids go to Highland currently um, that live near Highland, but they want their kids to go to a school in Glendale that has, let's say, a more community-focused perspective or is a dual immersion school or is more connected to the University of Utah or whatever it may be, right? There, we can create more opportunity um, by having each of the schools sort of have a focus and then kids get to choose where they want to go. It sounds, Jenny, like what the school district's view on this is, is very much the taxpayer dollar is the bottom line and we need to figure out how to responsibly spend that money. And the view from parents, which it feels like was really almost one of the key takeaways from conversations around the decision to close four elementary schools in Salt Lake City, is where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That I completely agree. We, you know, we are, our systems make us and we make our systems, right? And we can make change in those spaces when when we individually and then collectively make different decisions. Jenny Mayer Glenn, longtime advocate for Salt Lake City's West Side and a former Salt Lake City School District employee. Thank you so much for your time and your candor. Thank you. I appreciate it. If you want to read the letter, Education Collective SLC wrote the Salt Lake City School District in 2020. I linked it in the episode notes. You might recognize some of the signatures, like Representative Angela Romero and Glendale Neighborhood Council Chair Turner Bitten. 
We asked the Salt Lake City School District for an update on the bond and a Glendale High School. Spokesperson Yandari Chatwin says the district is still collecting data and polling before finalizing an amount. They need to figure out what they're bonding for before asking Salt Lake City taxpayers to pay for it during the 2024 election. Yandari says the school board will likely revisit the bond conversation this spring. That is all for us today here on CityCast Salt Lake. Thank you for listening. We will be back tomorrow morning with more from around this city. Bye.